church. Come on, let's praise God together. Amen. Here we go. So come on, let's sing it together. Salvation sounds a new beginning. As distant hearts begin believing. Redemption's bid is unrelenting. Your love goes on. Your love goes on. When the world
my goodness, how wonderful I'm in heaven. D, leading us like that, Christ alone, cornerstone. You're a queen, phenomenal. So thank God for our team. Could see Caleb there and the team as well from our Southwest campus and others. So thank you all of you for everything you've been putting into online church now for 23 weeks. It's amazing. So here we are this evening having church and I'm sure glad you joined us. You know, I got to know the team here so well. Uh, I'm right now in a place called Tustin in Orange County uh, where we have a studio for our Hillsong channel. Uh, very, very um, generously given to us by TBN. And so we're very grateful, very thankful for that. But that's where I am right now. So I've got, there's a whole team here, our channel team. Uh, our channel employs quite a lot of people here uh, and they're a fantastic team. We're gonna pray for these prayer requests. We're gonna get serious about this because we know God answers prayer. We know how desperate people are in this season and this time. Uh, and we also know how wonderful our God is. He's a miracle worker, He's a healer. So Father, in Jesus' Name, we thank You for answered prayer. We thank You we have the victory in Jesus Christ, that nothing is impossible to You, that every one of these requests are known to You. And Lord, Your Word says, whatever petition we ask of You, You hear us, Lord, and You answer our prayer. So I believe that in Jesus' Name. People are gonna see miraculous turnaround the supernatural divine intervention and just the most wonderful stories and testimonies to come out of these prayers right now. Father, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So listen to some of these praise reports. Uh, some are praising God for provision after three months, finally offered a job despite Victoria being in lockdown. So that is fantastic. By the way, at the end of these services, we're going to have a special item from our worship team in Victoria. So from deep down in isolation, it's beautiful. You're gonna be blessed by that. And we continue to pray for all of you in Victoria. And we believe that this will all come to a quick resolve in Jesus' Name. Courtney praising God for undergoing a successful surgery with incredible healing over two weeks of recovery time. Someone else praising God for His provision and protection over their family. Their baby doesn't have an allergy to nuts anymore and his wife has a job opportunity. Romano praising God for all extra shifts at work and the opportunity to help at Hillsong College recording for new online intake. Praising God for her son, Naomi is, who started his first job. And Irene praising God as son was recovered from a protruding disc and has resumed working full time. Praising God, someone else for being invited for a second job interview. Someone thanking God for amazing leaders and friends and dares praising God for the birth of their healthy baby boy. So there's always good reports, always good things happening. And we're grateful for that. We're heading up toward six months now online. Uh, we could never have imagined, but I've been so thrilled with the way our church has leaned in and stayed engaged. And I would just like to really encourage us along those lines, just the importance of not growing weary during the season. You know, the scripture says, do not grow weary in doing good. So in this instance, the good is our ability to connect and engage online for church and be in church like we always have been in the past, uh, online though. And so, yeah, I just wanna really encourage our whole church to keep your levels of engagement high, both at our weekend services, um, I think the preaching and teaching that's been coming uh, has been building people and reinforcing people and keeping faith strong. And that's our intention at this time. Uh, but I pray we'll stay engaged when it comes to our giving and our tithing. Obviously our church in this season also has challenges. And I'm believing that all of our church are gonna realise the part that you play and that we can all together determine we are gonna to continue to give our best. If you get the chance to be in one of the crew meetings, those are gatherings on Zoom that happen before every service in our Australia Bali services. So it would be fantastic if even more of you engaged in those. It's like a little Bible study and prayer right before the service and I'm sure quite a bit of fun as well. And anything else you can do during the week, uh, engage every way you can with what we as a church are doing and what we're delivering online. And our pastors have gone over and beyond and the numbers now of people that they have personally contacted uh, during this five, six month season uh, 
up in the hundreds of thousands. It's really incredible. Just what an a, a amazing job of looking after the people of our church, our pastors are doing. So we should give them a big round of applause. And by the way, maybe you've been checking us out, Online Church, Hillsong, Australia, obviously, going out to the globe. But we have an online campus and we had that before uh, COVID-19. So before we were all forced to have church online, which has been a great experience, uh, we already had an online campus. And listen, if you, uh, joining into our services and you don't live near one of our campuses or one of our global churches, uh, but you think, I'd love to be part of Hillsong Church. You can be. And I would really encourage you to engage with our team. Uh, join the community. You can be part of Hillsong Church no matter where you are in the world. We have already in Australia, Church of the Air, reaching outback stations, they call them. In, 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 the, in the outback, so it's fantastic. But you can be anywhere, be part of our church. You can join connect groups online. You can be part of a community. If you just go to those details there on your screen, uh, if you really think, look, I don't wanna just sort of join into church in Australia, I wanna be part of the church, then please do what it tells you there on the screen right now, contact that, and we'll, we'll make contact with you and we'll add you into our church family. And I would say, welcome home. It would be great, it is great to have you. So do that right now. That would be a great blessing to us as well. All right, uh, we heard already, Young and Free, a brand new album. A lot of work's gone into this. The songs are beautiful. They transcend youth. They're phenomenal, you know, youthy songs, but they transcend that. They're songs that really do touch heaven. And I, I think all of us should get that album. We first need to support our Young and Free team, but on top of that, just to be blessed, fresh, new worship music is always great. And so you'll be blessed. Some of these songs written by these guys themselves, Mel has been writing fantastic songs, Aidan's always writing great songs and others have been contributing as well. Let's make sure we get that 28th August. And so that's next Friday. And I pray we all will be part of that. So offering time, what a time, great time in the service. I last weekend went to Malachi chapter three for a change. And this week I thought I'd do something different. We're going to Malachi chapter three. And I was just looking, <laughs> I was just looking right now through some of these verses, uh, when you know it, I've lost my page. But what I love about this passage of Scripture is that it's got a power to it. It's, it's not negative. It's full of hope and it's full of grace actually, because this is how it starts when he begins to talk about the potential of God's people in the Old Testament robbing God. He says this, he said, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. He said, return to me and I'll return to you, says the Lord Almighty. What he's saying is, look, I should have taken vengeance on you, but I haven't. I'm the Lord, I change not. Come back to me and I'll come straight to you. That's what he's saying. And the context is our giving. And I pray that we'll realise that we serve an unchangeable God and His principles are unchangeable in our lives. And this idea of bringing the tithe into the storehouse, if you were to reflect on your church and what the church contributes to you, I believe it's multifaceted. I think there's so many ways that our church is blessing and impacting and helping people. I mentioned our pastors, but the storehouse, it's a place where you're fed. Obviously, you receive the Word of God. And on top of that, it's a place where there's community and family and where our young people in Young and Free, uh, week by week are being ministered to online right now. Peter and Laura and the team, they've been doing an incredible job. Hillsong Kids, the same. Uh, Hillsong Kids have just gone beyond 100,000 subscriptions, I think it is on YouTube. Uh, phenomenal. And what's especially phenomenal about that is it's the first church in the world to ever go over 100,000 subscriptions. So 
Praise God for that. We get to lead the way. Again, but there's so many other ways that the church feeds us and gives it back to us and helps us and helps those around and about us. And it should be, and I hope it is, and I believe for many it is a joy that we're able to give back and to be true to what God's Word asks us to do and put our confidence in Him and believe for the promise, opening the windows of heaven, holding on to those promises, holding on to all that God says to us is the powerful way to live our lives. We mention it oftentimes, but there you have the opportunity to just tick recurring giving. And when you do that, Firstly, it's fantastic because there's a complete consistency to what you're doing. And so for some people, that's great help. You don't have to think about it every single week. You just know that you are honouring God and you're putting Him first. But it also, obviously, is a huge blessing to the church when you do that. So if you are able and you're willing, why don't you push recurring giving? That would be great. I'm going to pray right now for your giving. And then after I've prayed, we will be ready to move on with this service. But first, have a quick look at this video. It just shows people who are new perhaps exactly how you can give online. Giving online is quick, easy and secure. Here's how. Go to hillsong.com forward slash give or click the Give Donate button if you're joining us on Hillsong Church Online. Enter your tithe amount and your phone number or email address. If it's your first time, we will send you a verification code. You can also activate recurring giving by ticking the box. Enter your card details and you're done. Thank you for investing into the lives of others. So Lord, we're grateful, so grateful to you for your blessing, for the way you're working in the lives of your people. Father, I thank you for the continued good stories of people and how you're giving people jobs and how you are bringing return into people's lives and how you are, Father, blessing people, even a season of strain. I pray for all of those who are desperate and challenging, challenged in whatever area of life, Father, whether it's their businesses, whether it's their finances, their jobs, employment, whatever it is, we commit it to you, Lord, because we know we can trust you with their very lives. If people give though, I thank you for their generosity. I thank you for their faithfulness. I thank you for their heart for God. And I thank you, Lord, that you are working in in each and every life. We thank you in Jesus' Name. Amen. Amen. So thank God for that. My son-in-law, I love him actually. He's a tremendous young man. His name's Peter Tognavalu. We all call him Togsy or Peter Togs. Uh, much to his father is Chagrin, by the way. His father is a Tognavalu and a chief, a Ratu in Fiji. So there you go. But Peter, brilliant preacher. I think you're going to be blessed. He will inspire us all. Make sure you stay tuned. God's about to do something great. Well, it is an honour to be bringing the Word today. I'm excited, really believe God's gonna speak to people through the devices, wherever you're joining in from, your living room, your kitchen, you might be on the subway, believe God's gonna speak to you right now. I'm gonna read a Scripture first. It's this, Colossians 1, 3, verse 1 to 4. Paul speaking to the Colossian church. And it's this, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. In verse 4, it says, When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. I love that. Set your hearts, set your minds. I want you to call this message, Set Yourself. We're gonna pray together. And I believe God's gonna speak through His Word. And I really believe in this moment, people's lives are gonna be touched right now through the devices. Whoever's joining in, maybe you're here for the first time. I'm gonna believe for God to really encounter you through His Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Come on, let's pray together. Father, today, we ask in Jesus' Name that You would speak to us through Your Word. Lord, we wanna hear You clearly. Lord, I pray today people would know Your voice. Encounter people, change people. May they know who You are. In Jesus' Name I pray. And everybody said together, Amen, Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I am no tech savvy person, okay? 
Let's just be upfront. I don't know anything about technology. I own a few smart devices and look, I, I know little about how to operate them. But what I do know is this, how you set your devices to work determines the function of that device. I mean, you probably woke up this morning, you set your alarm last night because you wanted to wake up this morning to get up, get that workout in, get that run in, get that push up in, do some sit ups. You see, you set your alarm because the function of that is that you would wake up this morning to win the morning, to win the day. You see, settings determine function. I was on my laptop just a few weeks ago and frustrated because my laptop wasn't working. My kids usually fiddle around with my laptop and they're always doing something and I flipped it open to do some work and it wasn't working. I was kind of frustrated being the non-tech savvy person that I am. I took it to another friend who was a little bit more tech savvy and he was looking at me kind of confused because my laptop wasn't working. I was like, can you fix it? He's like, Peter, you for real? I was like, yeah, what's wrong with my laptop? As he was just pressing the brightness button to bring it all the way up because I had had the brightness all the way down to its low, lowest setting. You see, setting determines function. And I think this is indicative of our lives. You see, we are all set to think a certain way and from that setting, we function. We think a certain way and that causes us to behave in a certain way. You see, that setting is the way we see. It's the way we hear things. It's the way we interpret things. Call it a perspective, call it a, a worldview, a, an opinion. It's from these settings that our life functions. I've heard it said that we don't see things the way they are. We see things the way we are. You see, Proverbs 23, verse seven, it says this, So a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We all see, we all interpret, we all hear from the setting. We all function from what we are set in. Our setting is configured by our upbringing. The settings that we have in our life, they're configured through our mountaintop experiences, our, our valley lows. They, they come through the people that we position ourselves around, the, the things that we listen to, the things that we watch. We are configuring our setting every day and it is from that setting that we function in our life. You see, set in negativity and you'll start to see the negative in everything. Set in the wrong group of friendships and you'll suddenly start to end up in a place you did not wanna be. You set yourself in stubbornness and you'll never see the need to change. Set, your, set yourself in familiarity and you'll miss the wonder and the awe and the beauty of what God wants to show you in your life. Perhaps in this season, I wonder if, God is resetting some things in our life, some normalities in our life. You know, when your device kind of slows down, it's, it's got too much loaded on this. It's taken up all the memory. I wonder if God's just getting rid of some applications in our life and He's resetting some things and He's setting the main thing to be the main thing, Him, Jesus. Maybe God's going, do you, do you trust me in this season? Do you really do believe that I am your provider? Do you believe that I can fulfill my promise in your life? Do you believe that I can bring healing? Do you believe that I am who I say I am? I wonder if God is resetting some things in our life. He's disrupting the normalities in our life. After all, He is the great disruptor. In Luke 12, it talks about Jesus came to, to disrupt the status quo. Maybe God is just resetting some things. And so I wanted to encourage you today to set yourself. I wanna give you two things, it's this, very simple. Number one is this, write this down. Set yourself from the inside out. See, we open with the Scripture in Colossians. And in Colossians, Paul is speaking to a community, to a church who had basically gotten distracted by what Paul would describe in Colossians 2 as hollow, deceptive human philosophy. You see, he, they had gotten distracted by some other ideas. They had missed the main thing, Jesus. 
And so a Colossians is a beautiful book of where in chapters one, he sets it up in chapter one. He makes Jesus, Jesus is the main thing. He is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is why we exist. It is why the world spins. It is because of Jesus that we exist. And then in chapters two, he reminds us because of what Jesus did on the cross, the completed work of the cross in that He died. See, our lives, our old setting, how we think, how we behave, that was also buried with Jesus at the cross. That was nailed to the cross. In Colossians 2.20, it talks about that we were dead with Christ. In other words, our old way, our old systems, they had gone, they're gone, they've been nailed to the cross. And then I love it. This is where we land in Colossians 3 because He's trying to remind us of the main thing. He says, because you have been raised with Christ. Look at Colossians 3. It says, since then you have been raised raised with Christ. You see, we have this new way of living and this Scripture from verses one to four, Paul is trying to to propose to you, what are you governed by? Are you governed by this old way of living, this, this old way of life that has been nailed to the cross or will you be governed by this new life? Since then you have been raised with Christ. Watch this, set yourself. How? Set it from the inside out. You see, I believe the Gospel, the good news, the Kingdom of God, it doesn't just happen through behaviour modification. Our lives don't just move forward by behaviour modification. It starts with an inward transformation of setting our hearts and our minds where Christ is. This is what He's talking about in Colossians. Don't be ruled by your old way of thinking, but reset because of what Christ did on the cross and start to live this new way that He has called you to. You have been raised with Christ. So set yourself from the inside out. Where does that start? It starts with your heart. It starts with our heart. I love what it says in Psalm 51:10. The psalmist, he talks about, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. You see, this, this f- life of following Jesus, it starts with an inward transformation of setting your heart on Him, setting your heart right. Newsflash, people. I'm about to burst some people's bubbles here, I, I know. But do you know, You have absolutely no control over what happens around you. You have no control of what happens to you. You cannot control the economy. You cannot control the choices people make. You cannot control the attitudes of people. You cannot control the weather. You cannot control the circumstances and the the challenges that you find yourself in. But guess what? The one thing you can control is your heart. We have control of one thing. I can't control what happens to me or around me, but I can control what happens in me, in my heart. And you know, there's a real enemy out there who would love to steal, kill, destroy and poison your heart and and cause uh, uh, toxicity to be in your heart and cause you to be jaded and and bitter in your heart. But you have to, like the Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, what does it say? Guard your heart. It actually starts like this, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. We need to set our hearts right, but then we need to, if we're gonna set ourselves from the inside out, we gotta set, as Colossians says, set your hearts and set your mind. Set your mind on things above not on earthly things, but on things that are above. You see, I believe life is lost and won in the battlefield of the mind. See, the enemy would love to rip you off in your mind, but I pray that we would continue to be people that do everything we can to have the mind of Christ that we, as the Bible describes, would take every thought captive and make it obedient to Jesus. 
You see, we have to be intentional with our mind. You see, right now I'm holding what may freak many young people out right now. They're looking at this and they're going, what is that, Mum? What's he holding in his hand? What is that ancient item Togsy holds in his hand? Well, young people, it's, it's called a, a, a CD, which stands for compact disc. You see, on this disc is encoded some data that will play some tracks, some music, and I'm holding the Young and Free CD, shameless plug right there, but on here is coded, there's, there's data, there's, it's encoded to sound a certain way. Thank God for uh, different formats of music now and you can stream music, but there was a day where you would insert this CD into a CD player. And you'd put this in, I heard someone say, wow. Uh, you, you put the CD player in and th then it begins to play the tracks. But how many of you fossils remember this? Remember if this CD was ever scratched, if the data and the coding was ever scratched, how many of you remember when you'd put the CD in, it would start to sound messed up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Things would start to skip. It'd start to go to the next track and you and start to skip again. It'd go to the end of the song, then it'd go back to the beginning, then it'd skip again, ooh, 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 and it just gets stuck and it sounded messed up. Well, so it is with our life. The enemy would love to scratch up your mind, scratch up how you were called to think, scratch up how God designed you to believe and think and scratch up some things in your life so you begin to function uh, in a way that just, just is messed up. And this is why in Romans 12 too, Paul challenges us in Romans 12 too. He says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed. Do not conform, in other words, to the setting of this world, but what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, transformation comes by the renewing of your mind. The Greek word for renewing of your mind is the word anachinosis which means to have an extreme makeover. It's an, another word for it could be a renovation. Have you ever talked to someone who's renovating their house, how excited they are? And you walk into their house and you're standing in the shell and they're like, we're gonna tear down this wall here and we're gonna, we're gonna build a new wall there. This is where that doorway is gonna be. This is where the kid's room's gonna be. This is where our room's gonna be. This is where her bedroom's gonna be, talking about your wife. I'm joking. This is where I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna put this there. I'm gonna put that there. I mean, the excitement of progress of things that they're gonna do. So it is when it comes to renewing our mind is that we must renovate our minds, build new frameworks, tear, tear down old ways of thinking, build new ways of thinking. You see, notice Paul uses the word there, renewing. Not renewal 30 years ago, renew your mind from 30 years ago. No, he's saying renewing. In other words, it's a renewing of the mind. Every day we must make the choice to build new frameworks, to build new ways of thinking, to keep moving forward when it comes to having the mind of Christ and thinking how He thought in His life. If not, we risk paradigm paralysis where you cannot think beyond the current model of thinking that you are set to thinking. That's why it's called a mindset because you and I are set to think a certain way. And the Apostle Paul encourages us to renovate your mind build a new way of living as He addressed with the Colossian church. He said, you have died. Your old way of thinking, your old way of life has died with Christ. Now you have been raised with Christ. So set your hearts, set your minds on Christ. The second point I want you to write down is this. So the first one is, if we're gonna set ourselves, set ourselves from the inside out. Second thing I want you to write down, set yourselves, set ourselves from the outside in. What do you mean? Well, what do I mean? I mean this, your eyes. Where are your eyes set to look right now? Some of you are like, I'm looking at you, yelling at me through the screen. No, well, spiritually, where are your eyes set right now? Where, where are you looking right now? Because I know if you take a good look around in this season that we're in, 
It seems like a whole lot of uncertainty. It seems like a whole lot of turmoil and turbulence and, 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 and destruction. It just seems so uncertain. So where are your eyes looking right now? I know it's looking at the temporary of man. I don't know how I'm gonna keep this relationship going. I don't know how I'm gonna keep my business moving forward. I don't know how I'm gonna hold down this job. I don't know how I'm gonna raise these kids. I, I don't know how I'm, I'm gonna stay in this relationship when I haven't seen them because they're long distance. They're, they're away in another country. I don't know. I know right now what you're seeing in the temporary and the natural just seems defeated. But can I encourage you to set your eyes upon what's ahead and not to be stuck in the temporary, not to be stuck in the here and the now, but set your eyes ahead. That's why I love we are part of a church. Something we declare boldly, frequently and regularly. It's the best is yet to come because we're not gonna just look back on the past. We'll honour God for the past and we thank Him for the past. We're not just gonna get stuck on what is happening today. We know the best is yet to come because our eyes are fixed on what is ahead for our lives. I love how 1 Corinthians 13, 12 puts it. And Eugene Peterson puts it like this in the message. He says this, we don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist, but it won't be long Woo! before the weather clears up and the sun shines bright. We will see it all then, see it as God sees us. Us. I love that. That talks to me about seeing that the best is yet to come. So what are you looking at right now? You know, uh, I'm no snowboarder, uh, but the times that I have gone snowboarding, uh, those that have taught me to snowboard, what they say is that wherever you want the board to go, just simply look to where you wanna go and the board will follow. Wherever you point, the board will glide towards. So in other words, what you look at is what you will move towards. And I think it's like that with our lives, is what you are looking at is what you will get to. Where you are looking is where you will head towards. So what are your eyes set on right now? Is it set on what's ahead or is it set and stuck in what's now? If we are gonna set ourselves from the outside in, we have to set our eyes right. We must set it on Jesus. Hebrews 12, one to three says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. In verse two, I love this. It says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter. For the joy set before Him, He endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand, the throne of God. Are your eyes set on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your, our faith? Are you set on Him as Paul encourages us in Colossians? Set your hearts, your minds on the things of Christ who is seated on the right hand of God. Man, that's good. That's good right there. Set yourselves from the inside out and from the outside in. Set your eyes. And the last thing is this, set your feet. My question for you is, what are you standing on right now? Because in our life right now, we are standing on what is unstable, uncertain. I can't, I can't stand on the economy. I can't, I can't stand on just what's happening around me. I choose to stand on the Word of God, the promises of God. When I was a kid, uh, I was climbing a tall tree. I was kind of moving from branch to branch. Well, I made the fatal mistake. I stepped from one branch to another and I stepped on a branch that couldn't take my weight. Snapped, broke, I fell from this tall tree and I broke my, my collarbone because I stepped on something that couldn't hold my weight. And so it is when it comes to our lives. What are you standing on right now? Are you standing on His promise for your life? Are you standing on the Word of God? Because that can take the weight of your life. You see, we must set our feet. As the Bible says in Matthew 7 verse 24, Jesus speaking about 
the man who built his house on sand, the wind and the waves came and it crashed and it blew over the house. But the wise man, he built his house on a rock, something that was a sure foundation. What are you building your life on right now? What are your feet set on right now? See, setting determines function. Setting determines function. You know, as I draw this towards a conclusion, I think about Jesus throughout the Gospels. And I think of the multiple times He turned up in people's settings. Throughout the Gospels, you will find that Jesus turned up, whether it was the man who was demonically possessed, or whether it was the woman with the issue of blood, or whether it was the man with leprosy, or whether it was the man who was paralyzed, the setting of that time would have said they were outcast. The setting in that time, in that time in history would have said they were pushed to the edges of community, isolated. That was the setting. But Jesus turned up in the setting and He reset the individuals. He reset the man and he reached out his hand and he touched the man with leprosy and he healed him. He said to the woman with the issue of blood, daughter, your faith has healed you. He turned up at the shores as the the man full of demonic spirits ran towards him and he liberated him and he set him free and he threw the demons into the waters. He turned up into the setting and He reset people's lives. But I want you to notice something throughout the Gospels, what you will see is there were two groups of people within many of those miracles. There was the individuals who were receiving their miracle and was receiving healing and restoration. But then there was usually the crowd or the Pharisees. Jesus was resetting two things. He was resetting No doubt the people who were being healed and restoring them and healing them and renewing them, but He was also resetting the way people thought about the Kingdom of God on this earth. Jesus reset our lives. You see, this is the good news. This is the Gospel. The setting determines the function. If you read your Bible, you would know that God created the world. The setting was to go forth, be fruitful, multiply, take dominion over the earth. But you and I, we configured it ourselves in Genesis. We said, God, we're going to do this our own way. The Bible calls it the fall of man. We stuffed up, we messed up, we disconnected, we isolated from God. You know what? God in His grace and His mercy didn't leave us in that setting of pain, shame, guilt, sin. He sent His best, His Son, Jesus, to reset everything. See, the Bible says in John 8, 36, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Maybe today you need to be set free. Jesus has turned up in your setting. Why? Because setting determines function. And because we were set in shame, guilt and sin, our function was shame, guilt, sin, mistakes. See, today, Jesus wants to reset some things in your life. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I'm about to pray. A short, simple prayer. If you're saying, yeah, I need to set my eyes on Jesus. If today's the day, you know, I need to reset where I'm looking right now. I need to give my life to Jesus. Pray for two groups of people. First group is you've never prayed a prayer to ask Jesus into your life. Well, today, friend, today's the day. Why don't you give your life to Jesus? Maybe at one point you prayed this prayer, but you know in your heart, you've walked away. The good news is He never walked away from you. So I want you to say this prayer after me if you're responding to this. Say this prayer. Dear Jesus, today I give You my life. I choose You as my Lord and my Saviour. Help me, forgive me, I need You. Today I surrender all. 
I want to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. See, if you prayed that prayer, it's a great prayer of asking Jesus into your life. And in a moment, someone's going to help you in the details of how to take this next step in your journey of following Jesus. But if you're still joining with us, I want you right now, if you would, just extend your hands as in an act of surrender right now, because I really do believe God's doing something. And I I said that God's resetting some things. And maybe right now, some of us, we have been set to think a certain way. And it's from that setting that we have functioned our lives. And you know right now, you need to be set free because whatever it is, maybe you've been looking at the wrong things. Maybe you've been listening to the wrong things. Maybe you've set your eyes on some temporary things. Maybe you find yourself in this season of challenge. And like the CD, maybe you feel like the enemy's just scratched up some things in your life. And maybe just things seem a little bit cluttered and clouded in your heart right now. I just believe in this moment, why don't you just stretch out your hands? If you're comfortable, maybe you're there in the living room or you're standing there with your loved ones or your friends. Maybe you're there right now, gathered or by yourself. Stretch your hands because I do believe God can do a quick work in this moment. Lord, I pray that You would just let people know You're there, right there with them. Holy Spirit, do a work in people's hearts right now. Lord, we set our hearts and we set our minds on You. Lord, we set our eyes and we also set our feet. We stand on Your Word. And Lord, it's uncertain times, but we know this, God, You hold our future and You wait in our future. And it is a victorious future. And we thank You for who You are and what You're doing in our lives. So God, right now, I pray a prayer of blessing over households, over marriages, over leaders, Lord, over young people, over young adults, Lord, over individuals right now, Lord, we need to reset some things. Help us reset what we need to reset. Maybe it's a mindset. Maybe it's a way of thinking. Maybe it's a behaviour. Lord, we know through the power of Jesus, we are not called to live by our old way of life. It's this new way of living with Christ Jesus as our cornerstone. So Lord, I commit everyone to You. In Jesus' Name I pray. And everyone said together, Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks, Togsy. Only Jesus can set us free. Praise God. Well, congratulations on the decision that you've made. I'd love to encourage you to click the link in the chat or visit the website, the screen. On the screen, you'll see it right now. And apart from that, I wanna pray for you. So Father, I thank You that Your heart is for Your people. Lord, I thank You that we can trust You with our very lives. You know our thoughts, Lord. You know our sitting down. You know our standing up, Lord. Your Word declares it. Lord, there's nothing about our lives, even our deepest heartfelt cry that You're not aware of. So Lord, I believe You're still with Your people, answering prayer, bringing miracles, intervening in their situation, Lord. Father, have Your way in the days ahead. I thank You in Jesus' Name. Amen.